The Kia Niro is the first electrified Kia model to come to Australia and doesn't just come with a hybrid version but a plug-in hybrid and EV as well. This is the plug-in hybrid which sits in the middle in terms of pricing and eco-friendliness and I'm here to see if it offers the best of both worlds or if it's a bucket full of nope. Despite being new to Australia, the Nero first went on sale overseas in 2016 and all three versions have arrived here now with the new version on the horizon. As such, it looks a little dated, particularly in the front with the narrow tiger grille and bulging headlights and there's a lack of character lines as seen in newer models such as the Seltos and Sorento. The interior design is also pretty conservative, but I don't mind it, it's quite neat and clutter free. And this is quite spacious for a small SUV, it's got a 2700mm wheelbase, that's bigger than the Seltos. The inside of this plug-in hybrid doesn't really scream electric future, until you have a closer look at some of the buttons and the dashboard. Hell, it even has a classic T-bar. This is the entry level S-Spec, which is pretty well equipped with highlights including power operated front seats, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, scene view and 8 inch touchscreen, keyless entry and power folding door mirrors. Like the hybrid version, this plug-in hybrid, or FEV, has a 77 kilowatt, 147 newton meter, 1.6 litre four cylinder engine under the bonnet and a 45 kilowatt, 170 newton meter electric motor that's coupled to a six speed automatic transmission resulting in combined power and torque of 104 kilowatts and 265 newton meters. Interestingly, the combined power of the hybrid and plug-in hybrid versions are the same, despite the FEV having a bigger 360 volt lithium polymer battery. Of course, the plug-in hybrid's party trick is the ability to plug in and charge that battery, which brings a combined fuel economy of just 1.3 litres per 100 kilometres and a 58 kilometre range. If you charge a battery through a 15 amp socket at a rate of 3.3 kilowatts, you'll get a full charge in about 2 hours and 15 minutes. Unfortunately, that's the fastest you can charge this, even when using 7 or 22 kilowatt fast AC chargers. Charge this at home on a normal 10 amp socket and it'll take a bit longer. According to Kia, it'll take, well, we don't know, they don't know. I asked them at the launch presentation how long it would take and they said they didn't try it, I kid you not. But doing the maths, an 8.9 kilowatt battery at about 2 amps will take about 4 hours and 30 minutes, which is pretty good. Um, you can wake up in the middle of the night, realise you haven't put your car on charge and you'll still have plenty of time before you get up in the morning. The Nero FEV offers different ways to drive efficiently. Of course, the most obvious way is just in all electric mode, where you get to drive up to 58 kilometres just on batteries alone, which is a very good range for a smallish 8.9 kilowatt battery. Even so, when you need a bit of extra power, the engine will kick in to help you out. This isn't a very strong battery like it is like an EV. You don't get that big push. And if anything, it's designed to offer economy over performance. Then there's a hybrid mode, which is quite handy when the battery is starting to lose a bit of charge and that just uses the engine a bit more, but relies on the battery when coasting and all that sort of thing to keep things really economical. But the mode I really like in this car is the auto mode, which chooses whether to drive in all EV or hybrid based on road conditions and your battery charge. So, you know, it, it'll drive all EV, but when there's say a decent hill, it'll switch to hybrid mode to preserve the battery a bit but the Nero does have a trick up its sleeve if you need some oomph, and that's a sports mode by just flicking the gear shift to the right, the engine kicks in, and then you're driving on petrol power alone, and suddenly this becomes a very different car. In my first 100 kilometers driving this thing, I used all the different modes and drove in all sorts of different conditions, um, from freeways and some roads just outside of, outside of Melbourne, and then um, urban streets. And I found the uh, fuel economy throughout all that, including quite a bit of driving in sport mode, stayed down around that 3.2 litres per 100 kilometre mark, which is quite surprising because I was essentially using it quite a lot as a hybrid, but it's heavier than the normal hybrid, so I expected that to be quite a bit higher, maybe in the fours or even up to the fives. So I was quite surprised at that. So even if you can't drive in full EV mode the whole time, you'll still be saving a lot of money at the fuel pump. 
Right in handling is also pretty good. It hasn't undergone an Australian suspension tune like most Kia models that come to Australia, but it does offer a compliant ride. It handles imperfections on country roads quite well. It can be a little busy, but there's certainly no jarring. Another reason for the smooth ride, apart from the multi-link rear suspension, is the 16-inch chunky Michelin Energy Saver Plus rubber. Looking at this as an overall package, this is a pretty good small SUV. It's spacious inside and the back seats offer plenty of leg, knee and headroom, even for six footers, and we'll see two adults or three kids comfortably. The boot space of the FEV is a tight 324 litres. That's the smallest of the three versions because of the location of the main battery. That means, as with the Nero EV, you have to make do with a tyre repair kit instead of a spare wheel that comes with the hybrid. Some space is also taken up by the charging cable case, which also doesn't fit under the boot floor. So at $46,590, is the Kia Nero plug-in hybrid a good option if you want mostly emissions-free driving without the range anxiety? Well, yeah, if you can charge this thing every night. If not, I'd be looking at the hybrid, which is $7,500 cheaper and has a pretty good frugal fuel economy of less than four litres per 100 kilometres. Then there's the age factor. Kia Australia have more or less implied that one reason it's bought the Nero in so late in its life cycle is to prepare its dealer and service networks for its EV onslaught that will be led by the new generation Nero and the exciting EV6 that are due in Australia by the end of 2022. Personally, if I was going to spend big bucks on an electrified Kia, I'd be waiting till then.